Howdy everyone, welcome back for the chapter 3 example problems. Uh, here we'll look at uh, molar mass, Avogadro's number, balancing, all the fun stuff that's going to carry through again for a lot of the semester where it's just something we got to get good at. So it's going to take the dimensional analysis from chapter 1, but now we're doing conversions that we're not used to. So that's why we want to be really careful when we set up our conversions about making sure the units are in the right place, making sure things will cancel the way they're supposed to, and then we'll be confident in our answers. All right, so if we go through, uh, the first one is 3.23, uh, just problem C, where it wants us to determine the formula weight of this compound, it's calcium phosphate. Now I picked this one because it's got the parentheses, it's got a polyatomic. The key is to make sure we know what do the numbers apply to. So this three over here, applies directly to the calcium. This four applies just to the oxygen, but the two applies to the whole phosphate. So if we're adding this up, that means we will have three calciums. We will have two phosphorus atoms, uh, and we will have eight oxygen atoms. And that's what we need to add up. And so if you do that, uh, calcium's 40.08, multiply that by three. Uh, phosphorus is 30.97, multiply by that by 2, uh, oxygen 16, multiply that by 8, add it all up, it works. Uh, the way I like to do it, I'll just kind of show it here on the paper, is I like to put polyatomics together because then this 2 means, hey, whatever I get here, I can just multiply by 2. So I'll, I, I got to start out with what do I, what can I put into my calculator easiest? Uh, so I can do the 4 oxygens, so I'll do 4 times 16.00. Uh, that'll equal 64. I will then uh, add, so that's, I'll just put four O's right there. Uh, I'll add the 30.97 from the phosphorus. Uh, and so that'll be what? 94.97. So that's the PO4. And then I'll just multiply that by two, and I'll use my calculator for that. Uh, oops, 94.97 times two, and we get 189.94, uh, and that's my PO42. Uh, then I'll just go ahead and say, okay, uh, calcium 40.08 times three, uh, that'll be what, 120.24. And then I'll just add those numbers together. All right, that's my CA3 part. So 120.24 plus the 189.94. Let me write that, 120.24 plus 189.94. Uh, that equals 310. 0.18, and that'll be AMU because they asked for formula weight. But if it's later in the chapter and you're asked for molar mass, it would be 310.18 uh, grams per mole, right? The number doesn't change. The, for, the process doesn't change. The only difference between formula weight and molar mass are the units. All right, so that's 23C. Uh, next one, we'll start doing some molar conversions. It says we have a sample of glucose, which they give us a C6H12O6. It contains 1.250 times 10 to the 21st carbon atoms. And there's four parts here. Uh, we'll start with how many atoms of hydrogen. So these are all conversions. We're gonna use dimensional analysis for all of them. Uh, so we always start with our given, 1.250 times 10 to the 21st uh, atoms of carbon. Scientific notation does make it take a little bit. Uh, that means atoms of carbon will go on the bottom, and we want to find out atoms of hydrogen on top. All right, now what's our conversion? Well, it's given to us by the formula. We see here glucose, there are six carbons and 12 hydrogens. So for every six atoms of carbon, there are 12 atoms of hydrogen. Now, so, oops, sorry about that mark there. Just got to scratch that out. Uh, some people like to reduce this, say, oh, 12 over 6, that's 2 over 1. You can do that. that that's fine. I, I might even do that mentally when I type this into my calculator. 
Uh, but I like to put 12 and 6 there so I know exactly where it came from. It was that 6 and that 12. Uh, now those are exact numbers because it's an exact formula. That means those are infinite sig figs. We don't have to worry about rounding. We start with four sig figs, we'll end with four, uh, and this will just be 2.500 times 10 to the 21st atoms of hydrogen. Okay. All right, now for part B, sorry, go ahead and underline that. Uh, for part B, how many molecules of glucose? Uh, well, we again start with our given 1.250 times 10 to the 21st atoms of carbon. And so we'll have atoms of carbon on the bottom. Here we'll put molecules of glucose. Now you could put the C6H12O, it's fine either way. Uh, but again, we need our conversion. Well, it says glucose, one glucose, so I'll just kind of write that in there, is this formula. That means now it's six atoms of carbon for one molecule of glucose. Uh, so this time we want to divide by six. So 1.250 times 10 to the 21st, divide it by six. We will get 2.083, and it repeats three, 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 three. So we can just leave it there. It doesn't, it uh, rounds down. Uh, and that'll be times 10 to the 20th this time, because we went down one. Uh, molecules of glucose, and that'll be part B. All right, so right, one molecule is all of these atoms, so we got our ratio there. All right, part C is now with the same given, how many moles of glucose? Now there's two ways we could do it. We could start again with the 1.250 times 10 to the 21st carbon atoms. But then we would just go to molecules of glucose and then to moles. Uh, so by doing part B, we can just start right there. So 2.083 uh, times 10 to the 20th molecules of glucose. Well, that means molecules goes on the bottom and we want moles of glucose. That mole abbreviation is why we can't abbreviate molecules really. All right, and we know from our uh, molar conversions that one mole contains Avogadro's number worth of particles. And Avogadro's number uh, with, we need at least four sig figs 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd particles per mole. So whether it's atoms or molecules or formula units, that's how many particles there are in one mole. So one mole of glucose, 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd. And you'll have to forgive me, I don't have a scientific calculator in front of me. Rather embarrassing. So let's see. 2.083 divided by uh, 6. There we go. <coughs> yeah. So this would equal 3.45, what is it? 8984 eight, times 10 to the what? Negative fourth, it looks like. Moles. Uh, now that's the calculator answer. We're only allowed four sig figs. So we take our first four, we check for rounding. Yep, the nine would round up. So this will be 3.459 times 10 to the negative fourth moles of glucose. Uh, and then they want to know what is the mass of the sample in grams? Well, again, we don't have to start at the very beginning because we would go to molecules, and then we would go to moles, and then from moles, we would go to grams. So we're just gonna start here with this answer. Now, by doing this, we might introduce some rounding errors. So if we you know, looked at a book answer, you know, this might be three, four, eight, or it's four, five, eight, it might be three, uh, four, uh, six, oh. You know, little rounding errors can happen. It's okay. 
uh, but let's see we'll take that answer all right that's what the whole point of sig figs is we know the three the four and the five are good this last digit might be one or off in either direction but that's okay it's not really going to affect our uh, our work so we have moles there that means moles will go on the bottom grams will go up top uh, now C6H12O6 we have to add that all up uh, I happen to know from using glucose way too many times in problems uh, that that's 180.18 grams if you round to uh, two decimal places if you use a different periodic table with more decimal places it might be like a 0.17 but again not going to make a difference we'll just go ahead and do that moles cancel out uh, so that times 180.18 uh, again, four sig figs, so we get 0 0.06232, and the next numbers are three, so it'll stay the same. Uh, so we'll just call that grams of glucose. So not a very large amount of sugar there, small amount, uh, but yep, that checks out. So that's how we can do these one-step uh, molar conversions. But you saw B, C, and D were really the same thing over and over we just kind of start it further that's what we're going to get to a little bit later here uh where well actually might be the next one where we do one big problem all at once because we only care about the start and the end we don't really care about this middle part where you know we don't measure moles in the lab we don't measure molecules in the lab we measure grams so we would often just want to skip right ahead to this last answer all right let's see what's next all right, yes, this is the last one. Uh, but this will incorporate stuff from chapter two with naming. It'll bring in balancing, and then we'll do the stoichiometry. It says aluminum sulfide plus water uh, will form aluminum hydroxide and hydrogen sulfide. We want to write the balance equation first for part A. So first, we got to have formulas. Uh, so what I like to do is, you know, for especially ionic compounds, which we have a couple of, uh, write the charges above the words to help me keep track of what am I switching, what am I doing crisscrossing, so that I don't have to write down every step of work, but I'm helping myself out so I'm not going to forget something, I'm not going to mix it up. So aluminum, based on counting back to the noble gases, is a plus three ion. Sulfide, counting forward to add electrons, is minus two. Uh, water is water. Uh, aluminum, still plus three. Hydroxide is a minus one polyatomic. Uh, hydrogen sulfide, we said in chapter two that if it starts with hydrogen, it's probably an acid. There's just a couple exceptions for gases, and that's what this is. Hydrogen sulfide is a gas. Uh, it's the smell of rotten eggs, so you might be familiar with it. Uh, so instead of calling it an acid, we call it uh, just hydrogen sulfide. Hydrogen would be plus one, sulfide minus two. We can figure out the formula from there. So now we go through, aluminum is Al, uh, sulfide is S. When we switch those numbers, it's Al2S3, uh, plus water, so plus H2O. Don't forget that. I'm going to leave blanks in front so I can balance this. Uh, react, so there we go. They form. That's our arrow. Aluminum hydroxide, so that's Al. Uh, there's going to be one of them. Hydroxide, there will be three of them. Uh, and then hydrogen sulfide, so switch the one and the two. It'll be H2S, and there we go. Now we want to balance. Uh, so again, what I like to do is just write every uh, element underneath the arrow as my uh, separating line, my equal sign, so that left and right have to match up. So I have aluminum, I have sulfur, I have hydrogen, I have oxygen. When we do our count, there's two, there's three, there's two, there's one over here, one aluminum, one sulfur. All right, here there's uh, H's. There's three there and there's two there, so that's five total. And then there's three O's because that three distributes. Uh, so everything's messed up, so this will be a fun place to start. Um, I see there's some, let's see, where we want to start here. Well, sulfur needs to be at least three. That might be the easiest place to start. I'll just, again, Educate it, guess and check. It's fine. So that'll be a three when I update it. That'll now be what? Six plus three, that's nine. I'm already kind of not liking that because I know this needs to be an even number, but we'll see where it takes us. All right, uh, 
yeah, actually, you know what? That's 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 clue right there that that can't work. It's got to be even. Let's just go ahead and make that a six, just so we know we end up with an even number. So that'll be a six. That'll be what? Well, no, that's six and twelve. That's fifty. I'm in the same problem. Let's not start with sulfur. Can I? Erase all that. Yeah, that's the thing with balancing. It is an educated guess and check. Let's see, what was it? One sulfur, and it was 500. Yeah, so the hydrogens are going to be messing me up here. Let's start elsewhere. Let's see. Um, oxygen needs to be at least three, but this hydrogen... Well, let's see. It needs to be three here and two here. So I need a multiple of three... And two, well, six isn't big enough. Twelve is, that's where I was going with the twelve. Let's just go ahead and put a six there. Make that twelve H's and six O's and see if we can make that work. Uh, that means we'll need a two here. So that's two aluminums. That's six O's and I'm already liking this a bit better. So that's two, that's three, six H's, uh, two more. Uh, that's eight H's. Now with the sulfur, if I put a three in front, that'll be six plus six. Okay, yeah, there we go. Twelve H's, three sulfur. Everything's good. That that means this is a one. So yeah, there we go. So sometimes it is balancing. Just you got to find the right place to start. You know, if something's not working out for you, try something else. It is okay to do that. It's educated guess and check. All right, but there we go. Uh, so we're going to copy this now into part B. Because uh, it says, how many grams of aluminum hydroxide are obtained from 14.2? So I'm just going to copy that over. So it was Al2S3 plus six waters went to two aluminum hydroxide and what was it, three H2S, yes. Okay, so we've got our balance reaction because we need that for this part. Here we are doing a three-step stoichiometry problem. We're gonna uh, look for aluminum hydroxide, so we care about this compound. And it's obtained from 14.2 grams of aluminum sulfide, so we care about this compound. So first thing we need to do is find the molar masses of those two. All right, so for the aluminum sulfide, aluminum is uh, 26.98, there's two of them. Uh, sulfur is 32.07, so we add in three of those. And so we get that this compound is 150.17 grams per mole. Again, same process as the formula weight, just now it's grams per mole. All right, same thing with the aluminum hydroxide. We don't care about this two in front. We only care about the compound for right now. Uh, so we have the, uh, what, three oxygens or three hydroxides. So I like to do the oxygen plus the hydrogen, 16 plus 1.01, .01, gets me 17.01. Multiply that by three for the parentheses. So now we're up to uh, 51.03. And then add in my aluminum. And so this compound is 78.01 grams per mole. Uh, and now I'm ready to go ahead and do my three-step stoichiometry. It's always grams to moles, switch the moles to the other compound, and then convert back to grams. So we always start with our given 14.2 grams of the aluminum sulfide. So always write your uh, formulas here so you know which chemical is which. Our first conversion factor is to go from grams of aluminum sulfide to moles of aluminum sulfide. So that's one mole and divided by 150.17. Our second step is to convert from moles of one chemical to another. So moles of aluminum sulfide on the bottom, so it cancels out. And then moles of the aluminum 
hydroxide on top because that's where we want to go. And then we look at our balancing to say what, what numbers are there. For the aluminum sulfide, there's a one in, or there's nothing, so there's a one. So that's a one at the bottom. For the aluminum hydroxide, there's a two in front. That's where the two comes in. Don't change your molar mass. It's right here, the two to one ratio. That's where we use the coefficients. All right, final step. We want to go from moles of the aluminum hydroxide to grams of aluminum hydroxide. Sorry for the penmanship. Uh, so one mole is 78.01, and then we'll get our answer. So if we look first, the all the units cancel out, grams cancel out, moles of aluminum sulfide cancel out, moles of aluminum hydroxide cancel out. We're gonna get grams of aluminum hydroxide, that's what we want. So now we just do one step at a time, 14.2 grams, divide it by 150.17, all right, then take that answer times two, take that answer times 78.01. Calculator tells me that this is going to be, what's that, 14.753, we'll just end it there, grams of uh, aluminum hydroxide. That's the calculator answer. We're allowed to have three sig figs. Notice that all of our conversions have more than three. This one's five. This one uh, is four. This one in the middle is infinite because we know the ratio. Uh, so we're allowed three sig figs. So it's 14.7. We cut it off. The five does round up. So our final answer would be 14.8 grams of aluminum hydroxide. Uh, so there's an example of a stoichiometry problem. I hope these are helping you. Uh, hope you know, you go back and watch them if you need to. If you say, well, wait, where'd that number come from? Uh, but especially stoichiometry, we're going to use it throughout the course. Uh, it even comes back a lot in uh, Chem 106, where we can uh, put in different uh, things. It's not just always grams and moles. We can do liters. We can do energy. We can put lots of stuff, but it's all going to follow this basic format. All right, thank you very much for watching. Have a good day.